uh, hi, it's Bye for Truth. Um, I am doing my um, continual test to prove all things. Uh, the aim of my channel is one, I want to make sure that people, um, you know, uh, know who God is. Uh, God tells us who He is in His Word, and thus the um, I want to represent uh, the God of the Scriptures. I don't want to misrepresent God. God says He's no respecter of person. Uh, God says um, that whosoever can believe and be saved. He says that salvation is a free gift. And he says all you got to do is to come and take and drink of the water of life freely. Meaning all you got to do is believe the gospel and you pass from death to life. It's not of works lest any man should boast. So that's the really important thing. But the other thing is I want to test and prove all things uh, with all people. And so what I look at is I typically look at people who are um, fairly popular, I think. Uh, because uh, if they're popular... Um, one, I think they're reaching a lot of people, and um, I think sometimes people can get a sense of false confidence in, um, in man, and we're supposed to be Bereans. And also, I think it's always good that, um, for me and for anyone else, is that if people are actually searching the scriptures themselves and asking actual questions, if enough people are doing that, I think it helps, it helps the person who's a pastor, it helps the person who's a teacher to continue to teach the truth. Uh, whereas if you just give them amens all the time, they can teach heresy and they will never know it because you're relying on them and, and you're not searching things out yourself and they can be in heresy and they, and they don't, at, at some point, um, they'd be too embarrassed or too proud to admit that they made a mistake. So, um, that's part of what I, I want to do. Okay. So right now I'm going to cover the two witnesses. This is Pastor Anderson and I'm going to go ahead and just play it and I'm just going to search the scriptures out and see We'll see if these things are so. All right, thanks. The fact that he didn't die doesn't really mean anything to me in that sense. So do you think there's any possibility that... Oh, so when they said the fact that he didn't die doesn't mean anything. Because they're saying, they're talking about Enoch. Because uh, it says Enoch... I think it says took him. Uh, I could be wrong. But they're talking about, well, you think it could be Enoch? It says Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him and a lot of people say that well Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him and they think oh that means that Enoch his flesh and blood like that God took so he can come back but people just seem to forget it says the Bible the Bible says flesh and blood can't, can't inherit the kingdom of God can't inherit the kingdom of God and so when they say God took him because they're saying they're thinking about the concept of a rapture now here's what I want to go ahead and expose and it's funny because I'm just getting into this and this is not even a point of this video but you know it, when the Bible talks about uh, us and it talks about the Bible uh, it's talking about um Lively. Let's hear. Let's look at this verse. This is a verse that's you know people just ignore. Ye also are lively stones that built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up what spiritual sacrifices. That is the rapture, my friends. When it talks about delivering up the kingdom, it says to offer up spiritual sacrifices. That that is the rapture. When someone came to you, when Jesus came to you in one of his saints knocked at the door you heard the gospel you believed you drank of the water of life freely you were born again if any man being a Christ he's a new creature and it says as you're born the image of the earthly you should also bear the image of the heavenly it says you're a new creature in Christ but you're not born of this world you're born of what? heaven and because you're born of heaven what does that mean? that means you're what? you're delivered up a spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God that's why Jesus says he that has seen me has seen the father well, you see them by faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you see God by faith, because you see him through the gospel, the, the Bible talks about, um, the Bible talks about the gospel. It says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light, see, so you see the light of the glorious gospel because this world is darkness. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is what? The image of God. That's how you see Christ through, through the gospel. Should shine into them. So when you see me, if you see me, you see the Father, you see him, you're offered up as spiritual sacrifices. And that's because one of the saints who has Christ in them came to you. And our whole job is to do what? 
what? We're, we're in the field for harvest. So it says we're strangers and foreigners. We're pilgrims in a strange land. And we're coming and telling people, hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. So that's when it says you're delivered up. That is, this is actually what the rapture is. But people, again, rapture is not in the Bible. If I was to look up rapture, let's look up, let's look up rapture right quick. I know what people are going to say. They're going to say, well, the concepts in the Bible. Well, why don't you just say offer up spiritual sacrifices or deliver Um, talks about how you people will deliver up people to death and all this kind of stuff, but um, I think it's offer up up, up the kingdom. Uh, up the kingdom. I know there's another word in here. I'm sorry. Okay. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom, the kingdom to God, even the Father. That's why it says the kingdom of God is, is in you. And you're offered up. You're delivered up. because it, But it's in you because those are your seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You're what? You're a stranger and a, you're, you're a stranger and a pilgrim here, though you're a citizen of, of the heavenly kingdom. And that's why the Bible says what? Jerusalem. it up enough that the Bible at least says remember it. That's why the Bible says what? It says, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is mother of us all, because you're born again from above. So you're born again from above, and now you're come back. That's why people's like, well, it's really strange. So you tell me we go up, and then we come back down, and then we go back up again? Yeah. What happens is you're born again from above, right? Because the first time you're made under the law, Right? And so now you're not made under the law. You're made what? You're created in heavenly places. You're in heavenly places, right? And so when it talks about being raptured up. It's Christ who came, who, who's, who's, who's what? Seated in heavenly places, but at the same time in his saints at the same time. And so he comes to you and he offers you what? You hear the word. So he one plant, one water, God gives the increase. And so then he harvests, he harvests, right? So to deliver up, he harvests. That's what you do with fruit. Harvest up. And then you're offered up a spiritual sacrifice, accepting the God. And then you see that tree in heaven that bears 12 men of fruit every month of the year. And that's the tree of life. And so then you have eternal life because you pass from death to life. That's why it talks about the fruits of the Spirit and calls Christ the first fruits. And so because we believed we're seated in heavenly places now we're here now again going out and giving the gospel to other people so I think I've belabored that point a little too much let me keep on going as John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah that it could be two men who come in the spirit of Moses and okay well, see the thing that they keep saying they said John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah and it's like well wasn't it supposed to be Elijah but it ended up being John the Baptist the reason that that makes sense is because we're all of what that's the body of Christ it's the body of Christ we've all been baptized into one one body by one spirit see you gotta understand that um uh, man you gotta understand that uh, Pastor Anderson There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. You see? For by one spirit, we're all baptized into what? One body. So when they say, well, it's the spirit of John, it's the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of this, it's by one spirit. So yeah, that's why it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. You got to understand, if that's the case, every single person can say that. Every single person who's who's born again can say, I'm crucified with Christ, never less I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So this is how Christ comes. This is what people call the second coming, but it's silly because it's not, it's, it's it's called visitation. Second coming is not in the Bible. Visitation is, but Christ liveth in me, okay. And so Christ liveth in me, and Christ goes out 
Christ is the only Savior, right? So people are getting saved. How are people getting saved outside of Christ? Well, Jesus is the light who's inside every single believer. And that's why we're called children of the light. And Jesus is called what? Father of lights, hence everlasting Father. And so that's why that makes sense. Okay, let's go on. Sure. It could be two men that are just completely unrelated and they're... Okay, now they say it's two men because they're talking about the two witnesses, but it's just really funny because, I mean, you let the Bible interpret the Bible, guys. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Okay? That's the two witnesses. I will show you the lamb's bride, the lamb's wife. Okay? The lamb's bride, the lamb's wife. That's the spirit and the bride say, come. Jesus said, you know, this earth, this whole earth is considered a wilderness. And Jesus said, that is he, speaking of Christ, that was in the church in the wilderness. Okay? Spirit and the bride, they come. The church is the bride. Spirit and the bride, they come. Okay? So those that's who the two witnesses are. Because it's always God. It's, it's Galatians 2.20. Always. Uh, I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live but Christ liveth in me spirit and the bride Christ in me Christ in the church spirit and the bride and then it talks about For it is God which worketh in you, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And what's his good pleasure? This is the will of him that sent me, that all who see the Son and believe on him have everlasting life. So that's the will of his pleasure. All who see the Son and believe on him have everlasting life. So did you see him literally? No. So when it says every eye will see him, well, not all see him because a lot of people are blind. They pervert him. So most of it says we sit in darkness. So we see him by faith. And the reason we see him by faith, just to show you and prove that it's uh, it's by faith. Man, I'm sorry. Getting worse. While we look not at the things which are seen. So this is how we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Christian, we look at the things which are not seen. I mean, we have faith. For the things which are seen are temporal. Everything that we see in this world is temporary. So this destroys a lot of what people are going to be telling you about this millennial kingdom. It's saying that the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay? The things which are not seen are eternal. So that's why it says God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. That's why the Bible says the spirit goes where it listeth, the wind goes where it listeth, and I'll hear the sound thereof, but we cannot tell whence it come or where it go, goeth. So are all those who are born by the Spirit. Okay? That's why it says as many are led by the Spirit of God have the right to be called the sons of God. You can't tell who's led by the Spirit of God. You cannot tell. That's why Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. If they follow him in the regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost, they follow him into eternal life. You can't tell who that is because all men die and you can't tell who who's going to heaven. You can't tell from the outward appearance. You just can't tell. So that sells that. But like I said, my opinion is that it's going to literally be Moses and Elijah come back. But it doesn't have to be. It could be two men that are like them. Okay. So now, um, you know, some people believe that uh, Moses and Elijah come in the first half, Daniel's 70th week. We know they come for a three and a half year period. Uh, some believe the second. They say in this likeness, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall all be also in the likeness of his what? Resurrection. So, yeah, they are in the likeness. See, we're already raised. We're already, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. That's already been, that means you've been quickened by the Spirit in your mortal body. And people can't tell who's been quickened and who's not. That's why people are going to be surprised because people are waiting for the second coming. But then he, Jesus is saying that a lot of people aren't going to know the time of the visitation because it's Christ, it's Christ in us. And he's saying, look, let me just go down to Peter, I think it says. Look. 
and I shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave upon, leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. The reason they know not the time of visitation is because when they go get the gospel, they're going to miss the fact that it's God that worketh in me to fulfill his good will and pleasure, and his will and pleasure is that all who see the Son and believe in him have everlasting life. But if you don't believe, he's saying, no, you're not going to get everlasting life. And so you're still, you're going to, you're going to, Jesus led captive to captive, you're going to be bound and you'll be cast out, right? So that's what he's saying. All right. I know the left behind series has them coming at the first half. They show up after everyone gets raptured. Uh, what do you, what, what side do well, you think they are? In? I don't think anything. It's clear and obvious, and there's no question about it, that they're in the second half of Daniel's 70th week. In fact, when you told me that left behind has them in the first half, I just found that bizarre. I can't even believe that. I mean, I think that's crazy. So I don't know where they're getting that. It doesn't. They may be getting it for the fact that when you look at the weeks, all of us who believe has entered his rest, but yet we're still, uh, though we're seated in heavenly places in the seventh day, the Sabbath, we're no longer of this world. We're also um, here as a witness. We have this treasure in earth and vessels, the Bible says. So we're already considered to be dead to the flesh, Bible says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Um, it says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So, what you got to understand is life is found in Christ and that's only in the Sabbath and Christ is our Sabbath rest so that's in heaven seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and so now we have this new man that's hidden our inner man and that man the old man is still in the, this world which is what not in the Sabbath rest which is not in the seventh day but still of the sixth day right 666 six, six. and so because that man was born in this born in this earth made on the sixth, you know, the man was made on the sixth day, that man will die and that man was raised what? Carnally. And so our mortal body was quickened. So that, that man still is 666, but our inner man, the Sabbath man is not 666. That man is, is not in of this world or in, is he may be in this world, but not of the world. You know what I mean? That's why Jesus says, they are, not, they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. That's why he told the Pharisees, I am from above, you are from deep. You are of this world, I am not of this world. So we, we, we are, the weird thing about us is we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but at the same time, we're not really of this world anymore because we're actually considered to be dead to the flesh already. All right, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. That's the part. Making sense. But let's, let's just open our Bibles to the, to the main passage about the two witnesses, which is Revelation 11. And in Revelation chapter 11, it says in verse 1, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the... All right, all right. He's going kind of fast. He says, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Okay, it's the temple of God. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this verse over here, and I'm going to measure that. Okay. I'm going to try to go. I think I have this uh, New Testament. Let me go to it and see here. It's all over, but I'm going to go here. Temple of God is here, guys. <coughs> Sorry. It talks about Jesus Christ. And this is what I was talking about. How we all have access by one spirit. For through we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So it's talking about this temple. But let me go back to the first, the beginning of this. Like I want to prove something to you. See, Israel 
Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all, and Israel is above too because a husband and a bride. See, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, as the Bible says, and just as Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. And it talks about us, and it says of us, it says, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. That's the rapture, delivering up, offering up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God. So that's in, that, that's you in heaven. But then at the same time, we're here on earth as a witness. And God says, lo, I'm with you until the end of the world. And so God is God is with us. God is in us. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. And then it says that in the ages to come, he might show his exceeding riches and grace and kindness towards us through Christ Jesus, right? It says we are saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. That's to be new creatures in Christ, right? And then it says, past times we were Gentiles, okay? Wherefore remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles. We're no longer Gentiles, guys. A Gentile is a, is a heathen, an unbeliever. That's in Malachi 1.11. If you don't believe it, go look at it. Because it calls a Gentile a heathen, an unbeliever. And the way you know that is Gentile, gen, generation, covered with tile, generation of vipers, tiles, snake, serpent, Gentiles. So in time past, we were Gentiles in the flesh, right? So the children of the flesh aren't children of God. Who are called uncircumcision by those that which is called circumcision in the flesh made, with, made by hands. And that's why it says, look, For we are the circumcision when worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So that's why it says you were Gentiles because the Jews not went outwardly but inwardly circumcision in the heart by the spirit, right? Jews not went outwardly but inwardly circumcision in the heart by the spirit. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna search every script. I'm not going to show you every single scripture. You're going to have to search it out yourself. So it's saying that, well, look, we were Gentiles in the flesh. And we were called uncircumcision, but now we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and truth. God is the spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It says that at a time we were without Christ can you be in can you say we were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel so you cannot be part of Israel without having Christ so anyone who tells you that Israel is not the body of Christ they're just lying to you it says that we were without Christ we were strangers from the covenants of promise see the children of the flesh aren't children of God children of promise come from a seed you only get the promise spirit after you heard and believe the gospel you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise having no hope because by grace through faith you're saved not of works as anyone should boast spirit and the bride say come and without God in the world. So so the spirit and the bride say come. So we're going and we're gathering people, gathering what? Children throughout time. It says, but now in Christ you were far off and made nigh by the blood of Christ. So that's telling you you became part of Jerusalem, you became part of Israel by what? By believing the gospel. Then it says, now therefore, because it says we have access by what for through him, Jesus Christ, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God. Household of God. So household of God is talking about the father, the, the bride, and the children. That's the household of God. And But it's saying in Jesus, the bride and the children. And it's saying the household of God. And are built up the foundation of apostles, prophets, Jesus Christ himself being chief cornerstone, in whom... The building for framing together, growing into a what? Holy temple in the Lord. That's Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all. So we're going to go back to that. Because in Revelations 1, he says, And there was given unto me a rod, unto a rod, and the angel and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Well, that's us, in whom we built freely framing together unto an holy temple, where? In the Lord. Right? And he says, Though them that worship therein, that's us. Okay? In whom also are built together an habitation of God through what? The Spirit. It says we have access by the Spirit. That's why it says the Jews not when I will be able to circumcise the heart by the Spirit. Unless a man be born again, he can't enter the kingdom of God. So this is what this is talking about. So notice. And this is going to say, look, because we were Gentiles in the flesh, and remember, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Remember that? Flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. So, 
it says that ye being in time past Gentiles see this is why they're changing the Bibles but I'm just going to go ye in time past were Gentiles it says but the court which is without the temple right that's the outer court which is the flesh and you still have the flesh right that's why it says your inner man the inner man is is, is no longer I to live but Christ to live within me it's talking about your outer man and your inner man it says well flesh and blood can't enter the kingdom of God because that, that flesh is is, is in my flesh dwells no good things and corruption can inherit incorruption so that's why you gotta be born again not a corruptible seed that's your first birth but of incorruptible seed that's the, that's the born again so it's saying the, the temple without that's that flesh temple the flesh it says measure it not for it is given unto the who? Gentiles God's gonna give that right back he's like nope I'm not worshiped with man's hands I don't dwell in a temple made with hands. Let me sh let me show you this because I'm gonna. Look, how be it the Most High dwelleth not in temple temples made with hands, as he the prophet said. Okay. Look. And God, who made the world therein, seeing that he is Lord of all, heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. And it says, the old Lord, it says, it, neither, does he, neither is he worshipped with man's hands. So that's why it's saying that. And it's saying, leave that temple, leave that court without. The court which is without, that's the flesh. He said, don't measure that. <laughs> don't measure that. You've been waiting in the balance of found wanting. That, that, leave that. It's given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city, see the holy city? Look. This is how the Bible is so amazing. Look, in the holy city, look, in whom the building fit friendly together, grow into a holy temple in the Lord. That's that bride, spirit and the bride say come. That bride is New Jerusalem, right? The bride is Jerusalem, Jerusalem by the fruits of us all. Holy city shall they tread underfoot for 42 months. He's like, well, how can it be they're treading the under city underfoot for 42 months? Is because we have this treasure in earth and vessels, and, and God is saying, What you've done to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. See, Jesus is the firstborn of many brothers. He says, What you've done to them, you've done it unto me. So they're accounted as being guilty for what they do to us in the flesh, even though God is the God of the living, not the dead. And God says, Look, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. He's counting what what people do in the flesh as to what they do unto him. To his, what they do to him if they do it to his saints to those who are born again and the people don't know who that is because like I said we have that treasure in earth and vessels and so that's what's amazing and you say well what's the deal with the 40, 42 months okay what's the deal with this 42 months and what I want to show you is um, let's see if I can find this here this is kind of tricky So the 42 months, you're like, what's the deal with the 42 months? Because sitting on tread underfoot 42 months. Well, here's the thing. Like, I was studying and I noticed this. Um, they're going to tread 42 months. But see, 42, we we are born again. Right? We're born again. And the thing I want you to see, I think we're done with this, Holy Habitation. I want you to see, like, there's Daniel when he's talking about... Um, It talks about those weeks. See, we've entered his rest, which is what? The seventh day, the Sabbath. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee for forty and nine years. Forty nine forty and nine years. That's just seven times seven. Because all those throughout all time who've entered his rest, they have to only saved in what? Christ. Jesus Christ says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. You must enter my rest. And that's throughout all time. And so while you have this carnal world going on, there's a, those who have eternal life. So that's a weird concept, right? You have the carnal world, which is below. And in heaven, you have eternity. And just think of this as like almost running parallel. 
And those who've entered his rest, those are all those who entered the Sabbath. Because man was created on what? The sixth day. But we've entered his rest. The seventh meaning we're new creatures because we're no longer of this world. We bear the image of the heavenly. Right? And so because of that, you say, well, that's 49. That's seven times seven. But at one time, we were what? We were of this world. So if you take 42, that's the earth. That's the part they can trample. That's the part they can touch of us, the earthen vessels. And you divide that by seven, that equals what? Six. Right? That's the part of us that can still be touched. Oh, man. Sorry. Man. I don't know if I can do this. See if I can do this. See if I can do this. See if I can do this. Man. That's unbelievable. Anyway, maybe I can't do it, guys. That's unbelievable. How can I get around this? I don't know how I can get around this, guys. Um, maybe I can make it bigger. That's weird. I'm trying to make it smaller and bigger. It doesn't work. Uh, let's see if I can do this, guys. I'm sorry. Let me uh, go back. Oh, that doesn't work. Not work. I just want a calculator. I'm just looking for a calculator online. I'm not trying to. Yeah, I'll do this. <clears throat> online calculator. Here we go. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, so here we go. So, again, this is 49. So all of us who believe, we're, we're at 7 times 7 because we have to enter his rest. So think of it like this. Like he said, there's just 7 times 7 years. And those 7 times 7 years represent, in those 7 times 7 years, just like if there's a week, in that week there are 6 days. But there's only one day you must be, enter his rest. You can enter his rest any time of the... Uh, any time, you know, but this whole world is actually considered to be what? In the what? Six. The six, the, the six, because this is the creation. Man was made on the sixth day. And that's what the Bible says man is, Adam is earthy, you mean earthy, right? Or being worldly. And so that's six. And so, but to enter his rest, that means you're born again. When you enter the seventh day, that's why it says corruption, because the whole earth had corrupted itself before God, and all flesh had corrupted itself before the Lord. He's saying, look, you got to be born again, a new creature in Christ, and the only way you can do that is by entering in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, all things have become new, right? So you have eternal life. And so that eternal life, which is found in Christ, that's only because you've entered his rest, and that's that's the that's the seventh day that's the sabbath so when you have these seven times seven that's 49 okay so let's take that 49 right that's 49 but if you see when you look at this uh thing that these guys are talking about he says he's trampled tread underfoot for 42 months 42 but all of us who have believed we've entered his what rest that's seven but the part that they can trample under our foot is our flesh and that's still of what six that's man made on the sixth day. Okay? I, want to, I just want to prove everything.
Let's see, here's what I'll do. I'm sorry, I just, I want to be pretty exact, because I don't know. I don't like not, I don't like that. So on the evening in the morning was the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth every living creature out of kind, blah, blah, it was good. And God made every beast of the field, and it was good. And Adam said, let us make man in our image. After the likeness, let him have dominion over the fish, sea, fowl, the air. So you see this, this is the fifth day. Okay. The evening was the fifth day, so that's the fifth day. God said the earth is bring forth every living creature. Okay. And it was good. And then God said, let us make man in our image. Because all those, look, Christ is called the first fruits. This is something you got to understand. <coughs> all goodness and all righteousness is in God. And so when he creates, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Christ is called first fruits, plural. Because we're created in Christ. And so he's called first fruits plural. And then we go out and and what? We create new creatures in the image of what? The heavenly image, the image of God. And so God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish, sea, and the fowl, the air, blah, blah, and all the earth and over every creeping thing. And so God created man in his own image and the image of God created him, male and female created him. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful and what? Multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And here's something very interesting. This is before they fail. And God told them to do what? Replenish the earth. And replenish the earth. Why is God telling them to replenish the earth? Because God knew, because all men have sinned. And that he knew that, that in Adam, all what? So look, let me just go For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Okay? So the God is the God of the living and not the dead. So he says in Adam all die. So if in Adam all die, then that means Adam was already, when Adam was considered to be dead. Spiritually. Meaning when he ate the fruit, he is considered to be dead. And so he said the day that thou eat of it, thou shalt surely die. No, right? So God is the God of the living and not the dead. So he said go and replenish the earth because... There's no life in Adam. There's life is found what? In Christ. So when he says, be fruitful and go and, and replenish the earth, God's already calling it because God already knows what Adam's going to do. You get what I'm saying? God already knows what Adam's going to do. So that's what's amazing uh, about the Bible. Like, Okay? And so he's saying... We born the image for all this. Who... I, I, I just want to be thorough because as we are born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So that's what he's talking about. He's saying, he's saying, men, when men fell, look, men fell, and he's saying, you, you, you're, you've fallen now, right? God looks at the inward not the outward and so he's saying now you've fallen you, you're actually I'm looking at your inward you do not look like me <laughs> you're not in my image Adam after you ate that that fruit of knowledge of good and evil because you're death and God's not the image of death sin with Philip says bring forth death God's not the image of death and so God is saying look be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth because I know what you guys are going to do you basically you made the earth death desolate there's no life in you Right? Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly. And Jesus is still is gonna to, gonna to come to them. He knows they're gonna sin, he's gonna to come to them, and he's gonna offer them what? A covering. And so Adam is in the sixth day, and he has to enter the rest, right? He has to enter the rest to be in the seventh day. So that's why if you take that same 42, 42 divided by what? Six, it's seven. Okay, but that forty-two divided by seven is six because that's the part they can touch. And the funny thing about this again, take the forty-two. Right, we start out divided by seven. We start out here. We start out six. We start out man in the sixth day, 
we enter his rest and we end up what seven the seventh day but the part that they can touch is still this part this is the earthy right all right so that's the 40 and two months because he's saying that 40 and two months is what they can still touch is the what we're seated in heavenly places in christ jesus we enter his rest and the part they can still touch is this the earthy the flesh isn't that amazing and it says, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy. Testimony. Listen. I fell at the feet to worship me, and said, See that thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and the brethren, and of the brethren. This angel is saying, I am of the fellow servant of thy brethren. Why? Because when we're in heaven, we're, we're angels. We're angels in heaven. And this person was, while they were here on the earth, that that you did to the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me, they were a brother. But then they're in heaven, they're angels. And he says, I have the testimony of Jesus. What? They have the testimony of Jesus? This is a person who believes the gospel. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus. That's the testimony. We have a testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, and so that's when it says, I will give power unto my two witnesses, the spirit and the bride say, Come, and they shall prophesy a hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Right? We're those who bless are him that mourn, those who in sackcloth and ashes. Right? So these are people who realize that they're sinners, realize they're desolate, realize they're empty, realize they deserve hell, and they believe the gospel. They receive the spirit of prophecy, they have the testimony of Jesus. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before God in the earth. Two olive trees, two candlesticks, okay? That's spirit and the bride. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And, the, the, and if any man will hurt them, it must be in this manner be killed. Fire will proceed out of their mouth. Jesus says, look, here's the thing. He, Jesus is saying, John the Baptist says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, who's mighty than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with what? Fire. So we have, we're sealed with the Holy, Holy, Holy Ghost, right? So it says, I'll baptize you indeed with the Holy Ghost and with what? Fire. Right? Fire. And it's saying that, look, if only people are going to make it through through the fire are those who are born again because it's saying the flesh can't make it through it so when we someone believes the gospel then there are a reward because when we give the gospel he that wins the soul is wise it's saying you know uh, it's saying that when a person believes the gospel it's saying like we we save them and others say with save with fear pulling them out of the what Fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. See, that flesh can't make it through. The outer part of the court, measure it not. That's why they don't measure the outer part of the court, because that part is going to be what? It's going to be, it's going to, that part's going to be uh, burned. That part is not going to make it through the fire. See, this is the purpose of the Son of God is made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. That part, that fire. It's going to consume all the all this stuff, all the corrupt, all the garbage is going to be consumed. And the flesh is trash. And my flesh dwells no good thing. It's, that's what Apostle Paul said. So hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. This person is saved, but that outer part of the court, that flesh, has burned. <laughs> that's why it says we go to that mount which can't be touched, right? Mount, let's see, uh, touched. That mount that can't be touched, that can't be burned, is, is talking about this, the spirit. For ye are not coming to the mount that might be touched, and that burn with fire, nor into blackness and darkness and tempest. It's saying, look, this this Jesus is you know, he's talking about the precious stone. He's talking about you know uh, that that part can't be burned. It's not blackened, you know, burned with fire. Jesus is that consuming fire. So he's saying, look, that's why I said out of his mouth proceedeth right. To devour his enemies, and in that way should they be killed. Because it's saying, look, of the of the of the 
The Bible says what? Flesh and blood? Flesh and blood? Inherit? It says now, I say this brother, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither the corruption inherit incorruption. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So the part that can go through is what? Children of the promise, the spirit. And that's why Jesus says, I'll bring a third part. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name. See? All the kingdom will call the name of the Lord shall be saved. I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. So that's what that's talking about. And if any man will hurt them, they must be this like matter be killed. Okay? These have power to shed heaven, that it rain not in the days of the, in their prophecy. Okay? They have shed heaven because, because they have the what? They have the living water. See, the Bible talks about us who are saved. It says we are what? A cloud. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that easily beset and let us run the race with patience that is set before us. It's talking about that race to win souls. So it's saying we are a cloud of witnesses and clouds have what? Water. That's why it says we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have reign to reign upon the earth. And since we're in Christ, he's like we 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 are reigning with Christ. Because we we see death rules over man, but we're no longer under death. We're no longer under the law, right? We're no longer bound by sin. We're no longer bound by the law. Right? And so it's saying like we do. You know? And so that's what it's talking about. And so it said, we have the power over waters to turn them to blood. Right? And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Because we do the will of the Father is all who see the Son and believe on him, have everlasting life. Those who believe, they're crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, they live. Those who don't believe, then they're what? Then if they blaspheme the Holy Spirit, then they're what? They're bound. And they're going to go, they're going to do what? Be destroyed by the fire. Either way, they're going to be destroyed because the, the flesh can't enter. And when they have finished their testimony, okay, that's us, right? That's us. And when we finished our testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, that's talking about death. See, you got to remember it. This is talking about the flesh, right? It's talking about the flesh because it says... Uh, it's talking about the flesh only. Whosoever liveth and believe in me, whoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He's talking about the flesh, the bottomless pit, the snake, the serpent eats the flesh. That's why it says that the guy in Corinth who had his father's wife, he says, uh, guy was acting up, sleeping with his father's wife. He says, deliver such a one under the same for the destruction of the flesh. That's that temple, that outer court. See, God's not going to destroy his own temple. That the what? Spiritual. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, day of Christ. So that, that they're, once, once they're done with their testimony, remember Saul lost his savior is good for nothing to be trod, thrown out and trodden under the foot of men. Right? Trodden under the foot of men for 42 days. Hence, this part, the flesh. And as they're saying, when they finish their testimony, the beast that's sent out of the bottom of this pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them. But it talks about us. For whosoever born of God overcometh the world. See, the part that's born of God is the spirit. Not the six, not the flesh, but the seven. That's the spirit. We enter his rest.
enters rust. Your flesh and blood can't enter in. So when it says the beast will come out, that devil goes around the roaring lion seeking who may, who may devour that beast, he will, he will defeat the flesh. But we're already dead to the flesh. So, like, what's the point? I mean, he's going he's gonna to devour our flesh, but we've already overcome the world. This is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith, because we're born again. So he's going to devour our flesh, but we're already dead to the flesh. And that's why it's like, uh, he, he will swallow up death in victory and the Lord will wipe away tears from all the faces and rebuke of his people shall he take away from off the earth for the Lord hath spoken it, right? Take away from off the earth, receiving heavenly places, right? So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass, saying, as written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Right? He'll swallow us up. The beast will ascend out of the bottomless pit and make war, and shall overcome us in the flesh. But whatever, we're, we're no we're children of the flesh, aren't children of God. But here's a part that confuses people. It says, and their dead body shall lie in the streets of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Notice it said, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. That's talking about the whole world, by the way. That's why it's going from Sodom to Egypt, which is spiritually called, right? Spiritually called. And it said, their dead body shall lie in the street. And you say, well, what do you mean they're dead bodies? Well, here's the thing. It shall lie in the street. See, we enter his rest, and we're not working according to our flesh. Right? And so we're not working according to God's God living and not the dead. So that's why it says that. But it says, and their dead body shall lie in the street. He's saying, look, to he that worketh not. So it's God that worketh in you. So are you doing the work? No. It's God that worketh in you. So is it through your flesh doing the work? No. We walk out to the spirit. We don't walk out to the flesh. So it's saying, it says their dead body shall lie in the street because... If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. It's saying, and their dead body shall lie in the street is because your body is already considered dead and your body is not working. That's why it says, in my flesh dwells no good thing. And it says, that says, says Christ is, is God that worketh in you, fulfills good will and pleasure. So your body is just lying in the street. And that's why it says they trodden underfoot for 42 what months because his body is already dead. See? where our Lord also was crucified. And it says, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations, he's gathering people from all nations, tongues, kindreds and people, shall see their dead bodies. See? It's talking about all of it. He says for three days. See, that's the 666. He said, why did he see it for three days? 666, because you're born of the, of the earth. You die of the earth according to the body. And you what? You're raised, your mortal body was quickened. So that's 666. That's 666. Right? When you think about it, that's 666. <coughs> Sorry. Right? Three days and a half. But see, the reason you escape is because I see that half day, 666, Spirit and the Bride say, Come. You've entered his rest. So you take that three and a half. Look, let's just do this. You take that 3.5. And it's the spirit and the bride. It's just they're, they're joined together. Three and a half, the spirit and the bride. You add those two. It's just times and times two. That's seven. Okay? You enter the Sabbath. And shall not suffer their bodies to be put in the grave. Well, that's the dead body. That's the six. Okay? And they that dwell upon the earth. See, the, see, that's what it said, David dwell upon the earth. See, here's why. And have made, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. And so, and they that dwell upon the earth, our dwelling place, our home is in heaven. Say, they shall rejoice. We were not of this world. Right? We're no longer of this world. Our, our citizens is in heaven. 
and say, They that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. It's talking about the false gifts that they give of the false gospel. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell upon the earth. That's talking about because, you know, we're binding men, right? They don't believe they're bound. And they hate that. God says that the world hated you. Remember, it hated me first. And so he's saying that's what you've done to the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. And he's talking about they're going to send gifts one to another. Okay? The Bible talks about these gifts. It says, Whosoever boasts himself of false gifts is like a cloud without rain. That's a false gospel. He said, we are clouds, right? And we have rain. We have living water. Remember it said of us, it says we can do what? We have the power to shut that it rain not in our, in our um, let me see it. Okay. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with as many plagues as they will. So we have the living water inside of it. It says, he that believeth on me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's causes a cloud of witnesses because we have the water in us. And but said, but those who don't have um, the living water in them, whosoever boasts himself of a false gift is like a cloud and wind without rain. And it calls these people, it says, uh, it talks about them in the New Testament too. It says that these guys, it says, uh, these guys, these are spots in our feast of charity because salvation is a free gift. They feast with us, but these guys are the devouring beasts, feeding themselves without fear, right? Clouds they are, but they don't have living water, without water. Carried about of wind, see the wind represents spirit, spirits, because there's those who have the spirit of Christ and those who have the spirit of a the devil. These are those who are born again of the what, incorruptible fruit by the word of God. But these are trees, trees whose fruits wither because they're of the flesh. Without fruit, right? Because he says he will not leave at least one stone upon another. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots because they're, they're rooted in this world and everything in this world is going to be rooted up. you got to be rooted in heaven. Jesus says he's the root and the offspring. So if you're not rooted in Christ, you're not going to make it. Okay? And so we go back. They're going to overcome, blah, 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 blah. Make Mary sing gifts over there. And says after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered in them, and they stood up. Okay? On their feet, and great fear fell upon them which are on the earth. That's that that's that seven. Right? Spirit. And they heard a voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And their energy beheld them. Right? In the cloud. A cloud represents the flesh. They're not going to see it because you can't tell because it's in our flesh. We have this treasure in earth and vessels. You just to say they have to have heaven in the clouds because, see, there's clouds without water and there's clouds with water. There's clouds with the spirit of Christ. And there's clouds with the spirit of a devil. You can't tell who has the spirit of Christ and who has the spirit of a devil in them. And from the outward appearance, there's no way. You can't tell. You can't tell who's given the gospel and who's not given the true gospel from the outward appearance. So you can't tell who's seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and who, who's not. You can't tell. You can't tell. Then it says, And that same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was slain men 7,000. Why is it 7,000? Think about it. 7,000. day with the Lord is a thousand years. Each day it brings forth harvest. And the remnant, right, because the remnant of all the men of all nations, tribes, and people believe, and they gave glory to the God of heaven. To give glory to the God of heaven is to believe the gospel. Somehow, 
who should not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name. These are those who, they, they don't want to glorify the name. They're not believing on the one name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. They refuse to give glory to the name, right? So that's, these are people who don't believe, okay? But these were the ones who were frighted and who gave glory to the God of heaven, right? Second one was passed. Third one has come quickly. Seven angel sounds says the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our our God and his Christ shall reign forever and ever. And then when you talk about shall reign forever and ever, the funny thing about that here's the funny thing about that. For we which have believed do enter into his rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, and they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished where? From the foundation of the world. <laughs> That's why he told them to replenish the earth. <laughs> God got the victory before it even began. God got the victory. This is what's funny about it. People talking about, well, he's he's not really the millennial, see, you're in his reign. If you're in Christ, you're in his reign. It says, uh, See if I can find it. Here we go. See, people try to say, look, here's the thing. This is what's funny about me. This is funny because people don't believe. See, people are so carnal minded. Then come at the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he hath put down all rule and all authority and power. All right? Put down all rule and authority and power. Let me see if we go here. Okay. This is what I'm telling you. Christ is called the first fruits. That's why it was the let us. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So the life is found in Christ. Christ is our life. And so when Christ, Jesus, came, Adam was already what? He said, Look, the day that you do, you surely die. And he was bound in his flesh. And so every man that's born is born bound in his flesh. That's the, 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 the bond woman. So the bond woman is, is the one who's bond in their, in their flesh. She's a slave to sin. She's a slave to death. And she just, she's got no choice. She's going to die. Everyone who's of the flesh, they're going to die. They're not going to escape the grave. They're like, who can defeat the beast? Who's able, to make, who's able to make war with the beast? Well, Christ did. Christ already, he's the firstborn from the, from the dead. And so being that he's the firstborn from the dead... He says these works were finished from the foundation of the world because Christ is eternal life. And since he's the firstborn, that means he's the firstborn from the dead, starting with Adam. From Adam. That's why it says he's a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And because he's a lamb slain from the foundation of the world, when Adam believed, what happened? Well, he entered his rest. And so it's like, okay, there's those who are outside of Christ, but there's those who believe. So in Adam all die, it says in Christ all live. For as here it is, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So he's saying, look, you're born in Adam, you're bound, you're gonna die. God already knows that. God's telling you, look, you need to believe. I come to give life and life more abundantly. I've already conquered death, right? I can't offer you life if I haven't conquered death. And it says, but every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, plural, let us. After his data are Christ that is coming. Because he's saying, look, yeah, even though I am the first fruits, I am the seed that bringeth forth fruit. I am the tree of life. I'm the way of truth of life. Look, at my coming, I am going to offer you what? Living water. I'm going to offer you the word, seed. The end cometh the end. When he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power. And he's saying, look. Even though this is happening throughout time, right? He so, so said, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. And he's talking about the last enemy to be put for death. And so he, he he's already conquered death. But he's saying there's people who are walking around. There are there are death walking around, still, you know, because there's people who are going to be born in the future, but they're born in Adam. 
So that's in the future, right? So it says, but the last enemy shall be destroyed is death. So until God gathers the amount of people he wants, people are going to keep being born in Adam. And he's saying the last enemy is going to be destroyed is death. For he hath, for he, look, for he hath. See that? Put all things under his feet. See that? He already hath put everything under his feet. But when he says all things put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, so he's saying, look, I, I've already done it, but I'm telling you that throughout time, it's, I understand that these things are happening. Then shall the son also be subject. He's saying, the son also be subject unto him that put all things under him. He's talking about everybody. Everyone who's of the flesh is going to be put off in the flesh. The difference is with the Son of God is that it's God in them. It's God that worketh in them. And so he's saying the flesh, though, that outer court is going to be put off. Throughout all time, it's going to be put off. And then that finally, that last, you know, Jesus, the first and last, Alpha and Omega, he's going to put off the flesh, too. And just like, okay, that's all done those other ones didn't make it through the fire the flesh is the flesh is burned they they, they didn't make it through the fire and all the ones who are left are just going to be those who are what who are the son who are the sons who will be angels because then there'll be no need you know you won't be needed to be led out of this world come out of her my people because you'll be in heaven you'll be an angel and it says it's sent out to him that put all things under him that god be all in all so it says else what shall they do when which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour, right? Jeopardy every hour? Because you, every day you're giving that hour. You're giving that gospel. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die what? Daily. Why do you die daily? Because that's you've done to the least these, my brother, and you've done it to me. I'm a crucified with Christ. I'm never let I live yet, not I. I, after the manner of men, have fought with beasts at Ephesus. The beast is talking about, <laughs> and the beast is talking about people. What advantage me arise? What if the if the dead raise not rise not? Let us eat, drink tomorrow. For now. He's talking about a corrupt tree. So, uh, okay, awake to righteousness and sin not. For I am not a God. Okay, okay. He talks about how are they dead? How are the dead raised up? He said, "I fool." And he says, "So it's not that they quick and to die because you got to die to self." He says, so it's not the body that shall be, because there'll be a whole new body. And he's talking about God giving the body as it pleased him, ever see his own body. All flesh not the same. And he's going to tell you here, he's going to say, look, resurrection is sown in corruption, is raised in incorruption. It's sown in dishonor, is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, is raised in So I'll just tell you, how what's the glory body that's raised? It is sown in natural body, is raised in what? Spiritual body. It's a spiritual body. It's not a natural body. It's not of the flesh. Children of flesh aren't children of God. So it's letting you know it's a new the body's gonna be a complete new body, spiritual body. And so this is what it's saying. And um man, it's an hour and eight minutes, and I was covering uh, Steve Anderson. Well let's listen to what he says. I just basically pretty much went through what I believe. You guys go through listen to what he says. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So, again, I told you the testimony of Jesus, the, 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 he's going to get power. Man. For the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness, but so is, but, but unto us which are saved, it is the power. He gives the power to his two witnesses because we have the power of the gospel. Right? Right? sewn sackcloth upon my skin that's that outer court and defiled my horn in the dust right 
Okay. So. Here's the thing. Talking about Jerusalem, Abraham had two sons, one of the bomb made, one of the free. Well, like I said, the bond woman of those who born as a flesh, the free with those who are promised as the spirit, the free woman. Allegory, two covenants, Mount Sinai, one journey to bondage, which is Agar, that's talking about the law. Jerusalem, which now is in the bondage of children, that's of the flesh. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Jerusalem above is free, which is mother of us all. So you're born again of the heavenly, and then you're here in earth, right, as a stranger and foreigner, giving out the gospel. That's your testimony. And then as all people who are born again, that's you done at least these are my brethren. That's the 42 uh, months, whatever. And because of, they're born again, the only part that can, of them can be touched is the, uh, is the flesh, right? That's the only part that can still be touched. Can't touch the seven. Can't touch the, that part of the rest. And so that's what it's talking about. And it says, break forth the cry to veil, not the desolate, that's an abomination desolation, because we have no, no righteousness in us. But because we realize we have no righteousness in us, we're desolate, he says, we'll be filled, right? We'll be filled, right? And we never thirst, because we feel filled, we're filled with his righteousness. And he's talking about how we have more children than he have a husband, because the children of the flesh aren't children of God, but he said of the children of the flesh, they're all going to die, so that's not going to profit them. And we're fruitful and we multiply it and our this fruit doesn't wither us and they die if not, right? And we're not plucked up, right? Now we brother as I gotta show another promise. That was just a, but he that's born as a flesh persecute, he that's born as a spirit, even so it is now. That's what you've done at least he's my brother, you've done it to me, it's children of the flesh aren't children of God. There you go. It says cast out the bond woman with her son, for the bond woman will not have the heir with children of the of the free woman. Children of the flesh aren't children of God, so he said he the Lord will give it to us. So then, brother, we are not children of the bondwoman, children of the flesh, but children of the free spirit, okay? So that's what it's saying. And um, let me see what he's got to say, man. So if you look at that, it talks about the abomination of desolation, talks about Jerusalem being trodden underfoot of the Gentiles for 42 months. And it's during that time, he says, that he will give power unto his two witnesses, and they will prophesy. Well, obviously we know that the abomination of desolation comes at the midpoint of Daniel's 70th week, and it's from there forward that the two witnesses prophesy. Brother Jimenez is going to preach the full sermon on the abomination of desolation tonight, so I'm not going to go into that, but that's the time when they preach. Also, if we keep reading, it says in verse 5, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So another thing to point out here is that during their preaching, it's not raining. Well, that wouldn't make any sense in the first half of Daniel's 70th week, because that is not the time when God is destroying the landscape and destroying the environment. That comes in the second half when uh, the environment is being destroyed. So it makes sense it's not raining during that time uh, and all these other things, fire coming out of their mouth. That, that all fits in with the second half of Daniel's 70th week perfectly. Not only that, but... Well, that's because when you're of the flesh and you believe, <coughs> you hear the gospel and then you're born again in Christ. So you're not destroyed. For those of us who are saved, if you die in unbelief, then you're screwed because then you're, you're part of the second resurrection. Uh, those of us who were born of the second resurrection, we actually were born again in Christ and then we were part of the what? First resurrection because we're sealed in Christ as the first fruits, right? So that's why it's like, well, he doesn't destroy them right away because those who believe they're not they, they have to believe first and then they they're destroyed because they can say I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live right and then they have their testimony here on earth and then the beast comes and kills their flesh but they're already considered dead to the flesh anyway but that's why that makes sense 
right after the story of the witnesses because they finished their testimony 42 months or three and a half years later after they're killed and then they come back from the dead it says in verse 13 and the same hour was there a great earthquake and the tenth part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the god of heaven the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly yeah. And the seventh, eight. See what you need to understand that Christ, that's all the first part, that's all Christ. Because it's all Christ, the first fruits, and he's the firstborn of many brethren. And because he is the first fruits, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and life is found in him, then that's what it's talking about. And then as Christ goes out to each individual person, that person is then sealed in Christ, and then that person is dead to the flesh, and they go out. And so on and so forth. That continues now, continue throughout all time to so the last person, the last sheep, supposedly. Suppose it. The last sheep is sealed. And once that last sheep who follows the shepherd through the washing, renewing, regeneration of the Holy Ghost, and that's it. <clears throat> that's the end. Right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. I'm going to go to work. <laughs> Praise my Lord and Savior. Inside, what must I do to be saved? It says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You know, salvation is a free gift. It's not a works list. Any man should boast. The gospel of Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose the third day according to the scriptures. You believe that, you pass from death to life, and shall not come into condemnation.